Hi everyone, welcome to this module on a quick demo of the OCI object storage service. All right, in the previous uh, module, we looked into the service and some of its key characteristics like strong consistency, high performance, high durability, etc. Right. In this one, let's quickly do a demo of the service. So we have been using the OCI console in our last few uh, lecture series. Right now, I'm logged into the OCI console. You can see I'm in the Ashburn US East region. And if I click on this sandwich or burger menu here, I can see uh, different services uh, links, right? So there's compute, block storage, networking, file storage, etc. So object storage is where you would find uh, the object storage service. If you click on object storage here, the first link you see here is, uh, is it says create a bucket. Now, before we do that, there is a, a, a compartment here, which you have to choose. Uh, uh, right now, we have been using training compartment for all our demos, so we'll just use that. Uh, but just keep in mind that the buckets you are creating uh, are also in, in your compartments and compartments are the logical isolation. We talked about that in the in the IAM module. So let me just go ahead here and create a bucket. So I'll say this is my uh, bucket for test. So I'll say this is my test bucket. And right here, I get a choice of uh, I get a choice of whether it's a standard tier or an archive tier, right? So I'll choose a standard tier and we'll go create an archive tier bucket also and take a look. And down here you can see that I can use uh, I have option, I have server side encryption and I have an option to let Oracle do server side encryption using Oracle managed keys or I could bring my own keys, uh, customer managed keys, right? Right now I'm just going to let Oracle uh, do the server side encryption using Oracle manage keys and I can of course do tagging. So I create a bucket here and you can see the, the, the bucket is created and there is nothing in the bucket right now. So a few things you uh, will discuss this in the next uh, modules, but a few things you see here. First, the visibility is private, meaning this bucket is not open to the world and that's the default behavior, uh, but I can come here and I can edit the visibility. I can make it public. Now um, there is a the check, Box here which says allows users to list objects from this bucket right and I'm okay with that I'll say it's it's a public bucket and it gives me a warning that uh, enabling public visibility will let anonymous and unauthenticated users access data stored in the bucket right so this you should only do if you have a need like this where you are sharing something and you really like it's like a web page you really don't care it's open to everyone if not you should always have a bucket as a private bucket, not 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 uh, make it make it public. So let's go ahead and uh, upload a couple of objects here. So I have been uh, recording a bunch of these videos. Probably those are pretty big. So uh, probably we're not going to upload them. I have this picture of Mount Rainier. Uh, let me just upload it. Right, it's a pretty small file, um, hundred KB or so. Right, so I see the file is uploaded here now. Again, keep in mind what, what we said uh, in the first module, you're managing data as objects. So whether it's a, a JPEG, it's a video, it's a log, object storage doesn't really care, doesn't, regardless of, of the content type, it manages them as objects and you can see the object here. So if I click on view object details, I can, I can see uh, some of the details here, right? First thing I see here is the URL path. So if I have to access this uh, object, I can click on it, and I can object it. Uh, I, I I can access it. You can see here. This is my uh, service URL: object storage dot us dash ashburn dash one dot oracle cloud dot com. Uh, because object storage is a regional service site, so it's tied to that region. Uh, then there is a namespace. In my case, my namespace is int oracle rohit, and that's the same as my tenancy name. So remember, every tenancy gets a unique namespace, and you can create buckets within that namespace. And the same bucket, test bucket, can be in another tenancy because the because the unique identifier is not the bucket name but the tenancy name, right? Uh, and then the object is Rainier, and there is you can see these delimiters here: uh, slash n for namespace, slash b for bucket, and slash o for object, right? Uh, I can see some other values here, right? I can see the size uh, of the file. I can see it's a standard tier. Uh, I can see things like e tag, entity tag, right? And these are used for uh, if you are doing multi-part upload. Uh, you can you can you can match your e tags um, if you know uh, there is e tags are nothing but your MD5 hash uh, 
um, and you can see some of these md5 hash sometimes the values will be similar sometimes it will be different uh, so again we're not getting to a lot of those details but you can see some of these uh, some of these uh, uh, some of these uh, characteristics here right so if i click on this um, this uh, link here i can see my object right this is the object which i have it's it's available here so uh, the service is really straightforward i can click download and i can download this ob this object right uh, and i can get that now a uh, couple of things i want to show here is if i change my visibility and make it private and save changes now if i come here and i try to refresh this page you would see that the page it gives me an error message saying that either the bucket name does not exist or you're not authorized to access it no it definitely exists because we created it so the second statement has to be true we are not authorized to access it so this is this is how your default behavior should be for objects you don't want to release you know to the world right uh, you should keep them uh, in a in 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 a uh, in, in sort of in a private bucket so that uh, so that only people who have access can access can have the requisite access permissions can access it um let me go ahead here and create another bucket and this time call this archive bucket and the behavior is very similar i can i can uh, i can upload an object here like we did earlier but remember it's an archive bucket so I, the data has to be uh, restored before we can download it right so um, the file is available here and you can see here the download button is is grayed out because i cannot uh, i i cannot uh, download it right away but this 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 bucket here uh, is is available so uh, if i click on restore it says uh, time available for for download in hours it's an optional value if i want to provide i'll i'll just go with the default and now i'm in the process of restoring this data now if i do this before 90 days there is a cost which is incurred uh, but like i said time to first byte is typically 4 hours and in 4 4 hours time i would be able to to get this data because the whole use case for archive storage is long term retention and backup so um, it, if you want to access your uh, data in an instantaneous fashion you should go to archive do uh, you should go to a standard uh, bucket hopefully that gave you a quick quick uh, overview of how the oci object storage uh, service works in the next module we'll look into some of the more details like uh, some of the more advanced details like uh, uh, cross region copy uh, pre authenticated request uh, etc uh, thank you for joining this uh, demo um, i hope to see you in the next uh, module thank you